in my life, I have been a complete overachiever. I co-starred in my first hit series at the age of 22, and my last one at the age of 56, with hit series every decade in between. I have had a number one record. I have co-starred in many films. I have hosted award-winning shows. I've won scholarships to college. I've won awards for everything from acting to stunts and academics in music. And it was the same thing at home. I was the mom who would choreograph all of her kids' plays and make all of their costumes and put a little flower in their lunchbox and a zip line in the backyard. I was the wife who learned how to run up a wall and do a backflip or drop in on a 10-foot wave on an 8-foot board and pump down the line just so I could play with my husband and the big boys, even though it was absolutely gut-wrenching. I have not been afraid of seeking out the skills and the knowledge required to become what I consider to be empowered enough to achieve success at the things I wanted to achieve success in. But the truth is, outside of the experiences I had with my kids, every success I had carried with it a low-grade dissatisfaction. And I wondered why. Then in 2015, after 35 years in the same industry and 30 years of raising two amazing children and managing four impossible husbands, I told you I was an overachiever. <laughs> the series I was on got bored with my character and started writing her out. My youngest child went off to college a year early and my last marriage broke up. And I knew in an instant it was over. The entire game was over. I was never going to have the family or the life that I worked so hard for. And for the first time in my life, I didn't know what to do. I mean, after all, it was that doing that got me here. And even if I thought I knew what to do, I didn't know how to do it better. I didn't know how to do it better. I didn't know if I can do more, if I could do it faster or smarter. So I walked down to the beach that had been my family's playground for the last 10 years, and I sat there and I said, okay, Mia, you're all alone, and you're free. You can be, do, or have anything you want. So what do you want? And I couldn't answer the question. I couldn't answer the simple question, what do you want? And I sat on that beach and I wept. And I wept and I wept and I wept because I knew that contained within the answer to that question, the real question, the question that is asked on a soul level, what do you want, was the essence of the real Mia. Contained within the answer to that question was the real Mia, the, the Mia that was capable of being deeply satisfied and deeply content and unashamed of expressing from her state of being rather than the incessant doing that I was so, go so good at as the overachiever I had become. So I sold my house, and I gave most everything out else away, and I just started wandering, with the only goal being to feel my way through everything with my heart rather than my head, and to reconnect with my inner voice. Now that voice led me from the beaches of Malibu to the sands of Suva, to the hills of Bosnia and Israel, and up to the mountains of Peru. And that profound journey, listening to that voice, that, that voice that took me on this profound journey, brought me into the presence of Kabbalah masters, priests, monks, shaman, 
and cutting edge scientists. And everywhere I went, no matter where these people were from, from, what culture, what religion, what part of town, or how old they were, they all had the same core message. The answer to everything is in the heart. With its frequency of love, it is the portal to the truth of who we are and what we're capable of. And I don't mean just what we're capable of achieving. I would learn that the heart is not just a pump. The heart actually has neurons, just like the brain, and sends more signals to the brain than the other way around. In fact, it's 60 times more powerful electrically than the brain, and up to 5,000 times more powerful magnetically than the brain. I learned that every organ in your body entrains to the heart, which means it lines up with the, with the patterns of the heart. If the heart is stressed and spasming out like this, none of the organs in your body can line up with it, and that is the beginning of all disease. But there's more. I would learn that the heart gives us access to more information than our five senses can detect. When I was up at the HeartMath Institute, the scientists were telling me about a study that they did where they took a handful of subjects. Half of them had been taught how to drop into heart coherence, which is that peaceful place right in the heart, and the other half had not. They sat them all in front of individual computers that were set up so that they would, the, the computers would choose random pictures, very evocative pictures, that would evoke very strong emotions from everyone. And it would do this randomly. And what they found was, yes, of course, everybody responded to these pictures. Because they were pictures like, you know, a toddler cuddling with a little puppy. Or on the other side of that coin, dismembered bodies lying about a street in, in puddles of blood in a war-torn country. So what they found was that everybody responded. But the difference was, those who knew how to sit in the heart space knew what was coming before the pictures actually showed up. In other words, working from the heart space gives us more access, deeper access, to our intuition. And a deeper dive into science and quantum physics would explain a little. Everything is made of atoms. atoms. And 99.99999% of all atoms, what is it? It's frequency. Waves of energy and information, just waves of information interacting with other waves of information. My friend, Dr. Teresa Bullard, who's a physicist, explained that so much of what our bodies are is frequency, that if we pulled out all the frequency, what would be left over would fit on the head of a pin. So stop and consider that. We are mostly frequency. We're frequency. We are waves of information interacting with and accessing other waves of information. And the portal to all of it is the heart. And the guidance system is the way we feel, not the way we think. Which is why, on this walkabout, when I stopped all the incessant doing and the pushing to achieve things and just started feeling my way through things, mystical experience is just starting to land on me. Suddenly, I knew things that I had never learned. I was communicating with animals in the wild. I had precognizance, which is the ability to, to know what's going to happen five minutes before it happens. And I knew in detail. All of this mystical stuff was so incredible. But you know the most empowering part of w awakening to this more of who I am? was realizing that I hadn't done anything wrong. That there was nothing more that I could do to create that family. I couldn't do more. I couldn't do better. I couldn't do it faster or smarter. What I could do, I could have done it truer. Truer to who I am. Truer to what I am. Truer to my true nature, the very nature of who I am. We are so much more, so much more than what we've come to believe. 
And experiencing the more of who I am, the truth of who I am, is one of the most exhilarating and exciting things I've ever experienced. And though it flies in the face of convention, I can't unsee what I've seen, and I can't unknow what I now know, and in truth have always known. It is what you know. You know that you are more than what is just sitting in these little bodies right here and right now. You know that. And I am more invigorated now than ever. Because I know who I am, and I know why I am here. No longer are all my skills and my talent and my knowledge and wisdom and all the energy I can amass in service to other people's definitions of success. All of it is in service to my divine purpose. And if you're sitting here right now, it's because you are a maverick. You're a maverick. You are a maverick. You are a natural-born revolutionary longing to serve your divine purpose. But how can you know what that is if you don't know who you are? And how can you know who you are if you don't know what you are? How many of you in here want to really be empowered? Do you want to be empowered? Do you really want to be empowered? All right, then sit up. Do this with me. Just sit up for a second. I want you to feel a little bit of who you are and the power of who you are. Sit up. Put your phones down. Close your eyes. Place one hand on your heart. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. <sighs> Follow the breath through your heart. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. One more time through your heart. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Now sit with that for a moment. And be present. Be present. And repeat after me. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. I am here. I am here. I am here. Take a deep breath in. And let it out with your voice. <sighs> Open your eyes and take a look at the screen. We're going to watch a little something. You guys are powerful beyond what you know. You are beautiful and powerful, and you have something very unique and important to add to the world, to the sum of all that is. That's what we need you to do. So be brave, brave enough to stand in your own truth. Be brave, be bold. Be bold enough to continue learning who you are and expanding into the magnificent being that you really are, and be true. True enough to let every word that comes forth from your mouth and every step that you take first be rooted in the frequency of love. Because together, that's how we change the world. Thank you. <laughs>